I'm presenting on increasing participation in computational research careers for women and underrepresented students through an intensive research-focused workshop model we call VIA. I am Erin Hester, the current PI of the program. Dr. Lee Bernacki is our key social scientist on the team. Kathy Kanemoto is a professor of computer science at Merced College and co-lead. Professor Joshua Veers is the previous PI of the project. This work is supported by a grant from Google Research Explore CSR program and funding from the UC Merced Center for Information Technology Research in the Interest of Society, or CITRUS. All the art you will see has been created by Miriam Martinez, our talented graphics and media intern. In 2014, Alan Ramadile and Campbell presented a reimagined model of the STEM pipeline. The leaks in the pipeline are trainee attrition, which are graded for underrepresented trainees, shown on the right in this model. In a 10-year study, the authors found that a comparable percentage of both underrepresented and non-underrepresented students declared STEM majors in their first year of undergrad, but there are significant rates of attrition for underrepresented trainees, which leads to disproportionate underrepresentation in the subsequent workforce. The authors identified the greatest barrier is between undergraduate and graduate training. Our motivation was to increase participation in computational sciences for women and underrepresented students in STEM. Computational research is an emerging and increasingly important aspect of many disciplines, including the geosciences. Cutting-edge computation and data science are necessary for studying complex earth and planetary systems, biological systems, food, energy, and water systems, and more. We designed a research-focused workshop to build community and open pathways into computational research for women students from two- and four-year colleges and universities in California's San Joaquin Valley. The San Joaquin Valley, in the heart of California's Central Valley, is one of the most agriculturally rich regions in the world and also home to some of the nation's poorest communities. A large proportion of the state's disadvantaged communities reside in the valley. These communities are disproportionately affected by environmental pollution and have high concentrations of poverty and low educational attainment. We held a three-day workshop focused on building confidence, technical, leadership, teamwork, networking, and self-advocacy skills. Students learned about careers in computational sciences and technology, networked with peers and mentors, and prepared application materials for research, graduate school, and employment opportunities. External evaluation of the program was conducted under the sponsorship of Google and led by Dr. Audrey Rohrer from UNC Charlotte. A common survey was shared across 24 participating U.S. institutions in the Google Explore CSR program, with unique questions add added to Valle's research program. A total of 32 students registered for the event. Four partially attended, never arrived, or left after the first day, leaving a total of 28 participants for the 2020 cohort of VIA students. Overall, we used three instruments to evaluate the program. A pre- and post-workshop online survey. There were 29 pre-survey responses, 26 post-survey responses, and 19 matched pairs, or 68% of total attendees. Post-workshop paper evaluations had a 96% response rate, and six-month post-workshop surveys had a 53% response rate. We mostly reached our target audience of San Joaquin Valley regional students of color, especially students who identify as women. 23 of the participants, or 82%, identified as female. Five participants identified as male. 65% of students identified as Hispanic, 23% as Asian, and 19% as white. Students were asked what would be the most likely cause of an interruption to their studies. All respondents said they would have to withdraw from enrollment from all of the issues presented to them. Financial considerations and lack of preparation were the dominant factors. Students came from UC Merced, UC Davis, Cal State Stanislaus, and Merced College, and majors included bioengineering, biology, chemistry, computer science and engineering, environmental engineering, and mechanical engineering. Year in school was largely split between sophomore and senior students. The three-day workshop was held in early February 2020. The event began with the UC Merced Frontiers in Technology lecture by Julie Baker of Ursa Space Systems, followed by an opening discussion with the UC Merced Chief Information Officer Ann Kovolchik. Over the course of the weekend, students engaged in coding, solved engineering problems flying drones, had campus tours, workshopped their resumes, online portfolios, and websites, listened to panel discussions, practiced networking and elevator pitches, learned about professional dining etiquette, and engaged in some social group building activities. 
Mentors came from UC Merced, Google, NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, and several private companies and engaged with students on a one-on-one -on -one level throughout the weekend. We set the atmosphere to be much like an academic conference and students respected the guidelines and generally participated in all activities, including yoga, which provided a break and created a group bonding experience. We had a number of panels designed to share with students different educational and career pathways. The panels included professionals who attained either masters or PhDs and were engaged in academia, federal, and private sector research ranging from aerospace to biotech, ag food tech to geosciences. Panelists addressed their educational and career pathways, including advice for pursuing graduate school, starting a family, identifying what a good place to work looks like, as well as how to land that interview. A graduate school panel populated with current UC Merced PhD students discussed when, how, why, and where to go to graduate school. Sessions on growth mindset focused on identifying fixed mindset statements and attitudes and developing strategies for shifting into growth mindset thinking. A formal networking dinner was held at the Merced Country Club, with students and mentors dining in a catered, full-service, banquet-style event. For many students, it was their first experience in a formal dining setting. Prior to the formal networking dinner with mentors, students learned about elevator pitches, practiced their pitches on each other in a two-line format, learned about some networking techniques and how to overcome imposter syndrome and feelings of shyness, and we also had a lesson on dining etiquette in a professional dining situation. We had sessions where students focused on developing their application and resume materials, including mock evaluations of anonymous REU applications, peer review sessions of resumes, and building their own online web portfolios. We also focused on building some technical and problem solving skills. PhD student Christiana Ade led a Google Earth Engine JavaScript coding exercise in which students quantified and visualized wildfires in California with remote sensing. We also held an engineering problem solving competition that involved flying drones and maximizing their payload in the gymnasium. Key findings. Given the small sample size of completed surveys for matched pair respondents, again we had an N of 19, non-parametric Mann-Whitney U tests, sometimes called Wilcox and Rank sum tests, were used in this and all pair analyses to test for differences in the pre-workshop and post-workshop results. Key components of research careers are being able to communicate findings, understand graduate school and careers, and work collaboratively. Overall, we found that post-workshop, participants had confidence in components of research futures, but about 20% of students still lacked key components of access in collaborative work and career options. We found that for each of the four questions, scores tended to be higher in the post-workshop survey results. We found significant differences in knowledge about grad school and career options in research using an alpha of 5%. The respondents were asked six questions about problem-solving skills. These included aspects of interest in and confidence in problem solving, including skills and ability. There was a significant increase in respondents' confidence in their ability to solve problems. There were other minor shifts that were not statistically significant in attitudes about problem solving. Post-workshop students indicated more interest in solving problems. The mean score for getting hooked on problems increased slightly, and there was an increase in disagreement with the statement, I am nervous when I have to tackle a problem. Students were asked questions about growth mindset or their underlying beliefs about learning and intelligence. Most students entered the program exhibiting an understanding of growth mindset and valued practice and studying over innate intelligence. Students shifted into even stronger disagreement with fixed mindset questions such as, I can't change my basic intelligence and I have a certain amount of intelligence and can't change it. In the post-workshop evaluations, a few students still exhibited fixed or negative mindset, contrary to the exercises we conducted. One student agreed that my intelligence is something about me I can't change very much, and two agreed that I can learn new things but can't really change my basic intelligence. We do note that these sets of questions and the previous ones about problem solving had contradictory language and double negative statements in the formulations, which could have confused some of the students. As a result of the program, overall students were more confident and more certain. The more neutral feelings of students toward technical skills is likely due to the limited nature of the workshop, as most students need to acquire and practice skills over longer periods of time. 
Given the workshop objectives, the neutrality toward career path is also unsurprising. Many panel messages centered on the nonlinear trajectory of their paths. They emphasized success despite changes in degree objective, delays in educational goals for child rearing, and other challenges associated with being a woman in the computational sciences. Notably, some respondents did not feel like they were able to work with people like them. Evaluation comments also criticized the lack of diversity in panels. Our internal evaluation showed that students recognized the value of advanced degrees and research opportunities in STEM. Despite having a panel in ag food tech, a major source of technology and economic growth in the San Joaquin Valley, only 30% of respondents wanted to work in that area, but over 50% would work in the tech industry more broadly. At a finer scale, in the external evaluation of the 19 pair responses, students were likely to change their career selections after the workshop, 10 out of 19, but most kept their academic goals, only three changed. For the academic goals, two changed from bachelor's to graduate school and one from master's to bachelor's. So what worked and what didn't? Half of respondents found networking to be the most interesting and helpful part of the weekend workshop. Many expressed heightened confidence and sense of belonging after the networking dinner. Students found the mentors were open and honest, sharing their stories and listening. Networking wasn't as hard as they thought and communicating helped build their confidence. Students also really liked the near peer graduate school talks and mentoring. Lessons on Google Earth Engine and team problem solving with drones were the most interesting to students and they enjoyed learning from each other and gaining skills to learn independently with open source software. Students learned from developing their own application materials and valued peer review of resumes and building their own online web portfolios. However, more than a third of students wanted to spend more time on finalizing their materials, more review, creating strong LinkedIn profiles, and getting professional headshots done. Overall, we learned that we need to slow the schedule down. Future workshops should provide a lot more time for hands-on work and should create more downtime and informal time for mentor chats and networking. It was also difficult to recruit for the event. We believe because many students lack an understanding of the value of such interventions and a lot of students couldn't get time off of work. Our aim is to improve recruitment and target more second year students for earlier interventions. We also found that some of the categories used in student identity were limiting in terms of gender, ethnic, and identity about heritage. For example, Asian was confusing and too broad for some students, and Chicano was missing, a category that some find to be more empowering than terms such as Hispanic or Latino. Students were also confused about questions associated with socioeconomic status. We have since updated our categories for these questions to more accurately reflect diverse and complex identities. Future curricula will specifically target issues of intersectionality and include increased recruitment efforts of mentors and panelists who are Black, Indigenous, Hispanic, and other women of color. So where are VIA students now? The workshop was held the first weekend in February to enable students to apply to summer positions. We conducted a follow-up in July 2020. Most students did summer school, but three were working. Two of these identified as male. Three other students had internships and two more participated in research opportunities, including one on campus and another with the REU through NSF's Computing Alliance of Hispanic Serving Institutions. It's also worth noting the toll of the pandemic on our students. As with the broader San Joaquin Valley community, COVID-19 is having deep economic impacts on our students. Campuses remain closed. A lot of opportunities disappeared in March when our students were sent home. One student, who was previously working in a research lab on campus, was forced to take a job at a fast food hamburger restaurant when the campus closed. Another student has left school and is now working as an auto mechanic apprentice after an internship with NASA. The burgeoning social network dissipated. For those that did receive internships, a lot of them were cut short and many conducted remotely, meaning students didn't receive the valuable in-person mentoring and networking such opportunities typically afford. Others are suffering verbalized personal challenges. Thanks to another round of funding from Google Research and support from Citrus, our next offering of VIA will occur as a series of online activities asynchronously and synchronously. We plan to keep tracking our students, including modifying our curriculum to re-invite VIA alumni to VIA 2021 and help them succeed in these difficult times. We would like to thank the individuals and organizations who generously shared their time, experiences, participation, and materials with this project. 
And most importantly, we would like to acknowledge and recognize the participants of the 2020 VIA workshop, pioneers in improving the face of TAC.